Today is a very august day, a very important day, a very pivotal day in our history as a people. It is a day that will be remembered in very much the same vein as Bloody Sunday. It will be remembered because this time the battle was not on the bridge, nor the weapons of choice were dogs and billy clubs and tear gas. But this time, the weapon primarily was a weapon of words, rhetoric. People have used the pen to try to sway our thinking, to sway our imagination, and to, to divide us further as a people. I think it is very, very asinine on the part of any individual who would try to tell me who it is that I can have speak to me and dialogue with. In 1831, in Southampton County, Virginia, a preacher prophet by the name of Nat Turner stood up, stood up to strike a blow for freedom. Those around took up their pens then and tried to recreate Nat Turner as some crazed, tyrannical maniac. But those of us who know the truth, and those of us who dare to want to hear the truth know that Nat Turner was only doing what John Paul Jones was doing when he declared, I've only just begun to fight. He was only doing what the founding fathers of this country had said that they wanted to be free from the tyranny of England. But we need to have our people understand that in 1997, the same things that white people want is what we want. And that is, we want to be free. Nothing more, nothing less. We need to move from the position of having other persons do our thinking for us. You've gone to college. People, people paved the way for you to go to college. People paved the way for you to have the jobs that you have now. How dare you become coward and tuck your tails between your legs. Because the real line is this, you say that you are people of faith, whether you worship the God called Allah or God called Jehovah or Yahweh. You say that you are people of faith. If God, if Allah provided this job that I have now, my faith believes that he can provide another job for me in his place. Do you trust God or do you trust man? That's the real issue. That's the real matter of concern. The struggle for human rights is the most important struggle in all of humankind. Our sister, poet laureate in our community, Maya Angelou, asked a question in her autobiographical work. I know why the caged bird sings, and I believe everybody in this room knows, because that bird desires to be free. Jesus himself declared that I have come to set the captive free. Moses, that man of God, led a freedom march from Egypt at the urging of Almighty God with a telegram from heaven saying to Pharaoh, let my people go. Harriet Tubman, in that same line of thinking, led the Underground Railroad and over 300 brothers and sisters were set free. Nat Turner, already mentioned in Southampton County, Virginia, joined in that effort. Sojourner Truth, Marcus Garvey, Garvey, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., and now the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. We gather here today in Selma, Lord Selma, at this most pivotal time in our history. And we, like the Hebrew boys of the Old Testament, we also are facing crematoriums. If you don't know it, my sisters and my brothers, our house is on fire. 
the fires of racism, the fires of bigotry, the fires of homelessness and hopelessness and haplessness, drugs, gang violence, tracking, all of these are fires within our community. And there are some people who are afraid to speak up. But I'm glad that God has sent a man at this day, at this hour, in the personage of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, to speak a word of truth, to speak a word at a time such as this. We the people need to hear what he has to say. Don't let Dan Rather do your thinking for you. Hear what the man has to say. And if I believe if you hear what he has to say, you will understand that he has a word of hope for us. He is just like Moses. He is in the same vein of David. He is like Solomon. He is a spokesperson for God. How do you know? Well, the true litmus test is that the world always rejects God's man or woman. Don't, don't be fooled, my sisters and my brothers. There are many people, even Rush Limbaugh quotes Martin King now. But Martin is dead and his words can be construed and misconstrued in any fashion to fit anybody and any, any occasion. But he's alive and well. And we're going to make sure it stays that way. Without any further ado, I ask that you would stand to your feet as we receive the leader of our time, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. of Allah the Beneficent, the Merciful. We give God praise and thanks for Moses and the Torah, for Jesus and the Gospel, for Muhammad and the Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of God. I am a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I can never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi from the East who came among us and raised from among us a divine leader, teacher, and guide for us in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I greet all of you, my dear and wonderful brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. But it means in English, peace be unto you. Right. To our dear pastor, the Reverend Aaron Dobines, without whose courage and strength we would not have a place to meet this afternoon. And to our dear sister, Sister Rose Sanders, her husband. And the president of SCLC here in the local chapter, Mr. Mitchell, I believe. I cannot thank God enough for the privilege of being here with you in this historic city of Selma. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I feel privileged because I'm walking in the footsteps of tremendous history. Top minister. Top minister. Although I am maligned and evil spoken of, Dr. King, before he came here, 
was maligned and evil spoken of. And the same media that has depicted me as someone unworthy to be in your company also depicted Dr. King the same. Many pastors at that time did not want Dr. King in their churches because they saw him as a troublemaker, as one who came to stir up the plantation that those on the plantation might go free. I'm honored beyond words to be in this sacred place, not just this holy house, but a sacred place, Selma, Alabama, where so many good people lost their lives. So many good people were maimed and wounded. So many scarred for life that we might have a right to vote. But we have not used that vote as wisely as we should have. And in some respects, we have betrayed those who died for us. Because we went to sleep thinking that the strife was o'er, the battle done, the victory of life was won, only to turn around and find that 30 years later, the same man who was mayor then is mayor now. We, we know that all human beings can be redeemed. And we believe in redemption. But things are still the same. You have the right to vote. You have wonderful politicians. You, you have people that are serving in many different capacities. But if you look at the condition of the masses of our people, it remains the same. So we did not get the right to vote and Mother Cooper did not knock down the sheriff for us to be knocked down by machinations and schemes that rob us of the freedom that they suffered to try to give us. I'm not here in Selma to create any problem. The problem is already here. Some of these that have opposed my presence, what are their works? We've read their words in the paper. But what are their works? On my way to this beloved and sacred place, I saw a sign this way to racial harmony, as though racial harmony was on the bridge. Racial harmony is not on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Racial harmony can only come when there's racial justice. Farrakhan did not come to disrupt what doesn't exist. You see? Our people are not foolish. We don't need magic. We need truth. We don't need magic. We don't need deception. We need truth. Those of you in power, you know that you are deceiving black people. You know you are making them to believe that something exists that you know. 
does not exist. So the real liars, the real deceivers, the real game players, see that's who are afraid of my coming because the truth in my mouth exposes their lies, their deceit, their chicanery. While I was walking through the museum of voting and civil rights, it took every bit of strength to keep the tears from falling from my eyes, to think of how my brothers and sisters have suffered to vote for the same people that put them in this condition how my people have suffered to be turned into apologists for their former slave masters and their children. How my people have suffered for a vote to put some of you in office and then you sell them out. While I was in the museum reminiscing over Dr. Martin Luther King and the Reverend James Luther Bevel and all of those who came to Selma, Kwame Ture and others who came not to be seen on television but to rectify a gross wrong, a gross injustice. And the media would act as though all injustice has been corrected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, all suffering has ended. All racism has ended. And then have the nerve to call me a notorious bigot while the bigotry, the racism, and the hatred still exists in Selma, Alabama, 30 years after Dr. Martin Luther King. I, I'm not here to stir up hatred. But if you had not been unjust to black people, there would be no hatred for nobody to stir up. Love and justice does not produce hatred. But it is evil and injustice that has produced hatred if hatred exists. While I was in the museum, his honor, the mayor, Mr. Smitherman, came to see if the people of his plantation are still all right. He came by and they tell me, I didn't hear him say it, but I heard that he said they're going to investigate Mr. Sanders and a grant that he received to see if he used any of that grant money to bring this hater and this bigot to Selma. I wish he was here so I could tell him to his teeth. And Senator Sanders did not offer me one dime, nor did I ask for one dime to come to Selma. I paid my way every mile of the journey. offering that you gave, thinking that you gave to me, I put a hundred dollars in that bucket and I'm giving every dime right back to Selma, that Selma may improve her own condition. <laughs> so
so mayor you can go back to doing something better with your time I came here to Selma to talk to you because your biggest enemy is not the white man your biggest enemy is your fear of the white man enemy is not the white man your biggest enemy is your ignorance of the white man fear and ignorance is your number one enemy how dare you say you are a Christian and that you know Jesus Christ and are walking in fear of the very shadow of your enemy the scriptures say perfect love casteth out fear and that is your problem you don't love God enough you don't love yourself enough you don't love one another enough I will tell you all, you can talk that foolishness to the ignorant. But see, you cannot bring that to me because I know you. I know your father. I know how you came into existence. And I almost know how long you got if you don't change. No man knows the hour but the Father. But they were asking Jesus, when is the hour? And Jesus said, this wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. But no sign shall be given to you except the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. So shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. I didn't come to Selma to stir up any trouble. Selma is already in trouble. I didn't come to Alabama to stir up any trouble. But Alabama is already in trouble. I, didn't, I wasn't born in America to stir up trouble. But America is in deep trouble. What trouble is America in? Tell it, tell it, tell it. What trouble are you in? Because you're in trouble. God said there would be a time of trouble like there never was since there was a time in a nation. But Michael will stand up in that hour of trouble. You're in serious trouble, black folk, not only in Selma, but all over America and all over the world, because the world is in trouble. We have reached the end of this world's order. You can't buy into this world and buy into the kingdom of God at the same time. You can't be mayor, young brother, like the other man. You can't be a judge like the other judges. You can't serve like the people that served before you. If Christ is not in you, if you will not serve from the perspective of God, then you need to sit down because everything that is not of God will be set down. Everything. You hypocritical preachers. That preach 
preach about a God who has power over everything and then bow down to the mayor as though the mayor is God and the police chief is God. I'm a fire con, don't, don't be too hard. You're in Selma. You act as though God is not God in Selma as he is in Mississippi or Georgia or anywhere else on this earth. God will be God in Selma when you stand up in faith and stand on the word of God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Dear beloved pastors, you got to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. There's nothing wrong with paying respect to the mayor or the police chief or those in authority because you voted them in. But it's wrong to give your allegiance where you become a little puppet and a plaything. Your allegiance should be to God. And that's why the scripture said, love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Well, if I give all my heart, soul, and mind to God, what is there left? All is allegiance. My allegiance can never be to a flag. My allegiance has to be to God and what God stands for. I'm not anti-American. I'm anti the hypocrisy that's carried on by America. I respect the flag. But I can only give my allegiance to God. God has never wronged me. Those who represent the flag have wronged us all. God have never enslaved me. But God knows that those who represent the flag represent the torture and the hurt and the pain of millions of my brothers and sisters here and throughout the world. How can I serve God and mammon too? You scared to death people. I warn you in the name of God that the fearful and the unbelieving will have their part in the lake that burns with fire. Either you're going to be men and women or you're going to die as a coward, leaving the legacy of your cowardice to your children. Your children will hate your shadow. They will never hate the shadow of Mother Cooper. They will honor her when she's gone. They will honor that strike that she made. What kind of parent are you? Cowing down and cowering before the enemy. While your children are standing there, they will take their lead from you. You've sold your birthright for a mess of porridge. What have you gotten? You've gotten nothing. Few little token positions that allow some token Negroes to ride around in their token automobiles, living in a token neighborhood, acting like You don't need no weak preaching in Selma. Go ahead. Go ahead. You need preachers who love God enough to stand up on the gospel and preach it without fear. We need Muslims that will stand on the Quran. Prophet.
prophet Muhammad, if he stood here today, he would stand with me and not against me. If Jesus came in this room, he would hug and kiss me. He would never stand against me for standing up for truth and righteousness and justice for the people. What trouble are you in? What trouble is America in? Whenever a nation's evil outweighs its good, God sends down a decree of death. I want you to hear me. I said whenever a nation's evil outweighs its good, the God of heaven sends down a decree of death on that nation, on that people, on that society. But he always sends somebody giving the people a window of opportunity to repent and atone and bow down before he kills them all. You have not justified your existence on God's earth. He didn't raise you up to be this kind of human being. Don't get angry with me. Just listen. You talk about you know some good white people. No, I want you to listen. What is the standard by which you measure good? By your ignorance? The standard of good to measure me, to measure you, to measure the mayor, to measure the president is written in your Bible. It's all right to carry an old lady across the street. That's good. It's all right to be kind to your neighbor. That's good. It's all right to give good counsel to your children. That's good. That's not the good that God judges a nation. Please hear me. One man came to Jesus. Jesus was telling them how that the nations would be separated and divided. Don't call me the separator. <laughs> Jesus Christ himself is the separator. He said he would separate the sheep from the goat and the wheat from the tail and the righteous from the wicked. Don't put that on me. He said I come not to bring peace, nay, a sword. Did he say it or did he not? Oh, let, let me hear something then. You don't have to get quiet. I'm the one talking. He said, I come not to bring peace, nay a sword. I come to set the mother-in-law at variance with the daughter-in-law, and the son-in-law at variance with the father-in-law and they of a man's own household will be his worst enemy. Why are you separating like that, Jesus? Yeah. Huh? That's a good question. Talk to us, Why? Why? Talk to us. Talk to us. Good question. The disciples said, Master, when were you hungry? Yeah, come on, Master. And I fed you not. When were you naked and I clothed you not? When? Were you out of doors and I gave you not shelter? When were you sick and imprisoned and I ministered not unto you? And Jesus said, Inasmuch as you have not done these things unto the least of these, my brethren, you have not done it also unto me. And that was the prerequisite. That was the criterion by which God would judge nations. Nations. 
Look at the homeless laying under bridges and in cardboard boxes. Look at the hungry who go to bed hungry at night in the richest country on earth while the greedy merchants throw food in the ocean to keep the prices up while people are dying of hunger. Look at the naked. Look at the sick who can't even find a doctor if they don't have money. Look at the lockdown. A million six hundred thousand in prison. In the greatest nation on earth, she has the most prisoners of any country on the earth. Why is that? Come on, minister, come on. Come on, minister. A nation that gives her people the greatest opportunity of any nation on earth. But she's the biggest consumer of alcohol and drugs of any nation on earth. Why is that? A nation that has the best, the best road system, the best transportation system, the best governmental system, this nation, above all the nations of the earth, has the best almost of everything. But she leads the world in crime and violence and murder and mayhem and debauchery and sin. Why, God, would you send down a decree of death on the United States of America? You better listen. Because after I finish and leave, God is going to answer every word that I say here in Selma and in Alabama. Watch the weather and see. He's sick of you and your foolishness. And he's sure sick of the government and white folk and yourself. Applause for your hypocrisy, talking about how things have gotten better. Patting yourself on the cheek like you did something. What did you do? Black folk had to tie to go to toilet with you? Black folk had to die to drink a cup of water out of a fountain. Black folk had to die to vote for the mess that they voted in the office. What did you do? What did you do? You hate my people. You smile. Your fathers were more honest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say that. Say that. <laughs> he is O.J. Simpson. He's innocent in a court of law for murder, but he's responsible. I really don't understand that. How could a man be innocent of murder, yet responsible? And they put him on the stand and asked him, did you hit her? He said, well, I'm responsible. He couldn't say yes, he didn't want to say yes. He knew he hit the girl. He knew he beat the girl. But beating his wife don't mean he killed her. But I'm satisfied. Go ahead, go ahead. That no man can kill another human being and get away with it with man's law and find refuge in God. Come on, minister. Your fathers killed us. Come on, minister. 
and juries let them go and called it justifiable. But God said, you got to answer for what your fathers did. Yes, sir. You're not to blame, but you're responsible. person in this audience that had a hand in our enslavement. They're innocent. No, these, this generation did not do that. But they're responsible for keeping you in the miserable condition that slavery put you in. So how are you the sons and daughters any better than your fathers? Go ahead. A decree of death has been sent down on America by God. The same plagues that he put on Pharaoh are now inside America. The Federal Emergency Management Act, which was set up by Congress a fund to help pay the tremendous cost of calamities. Every year they gotta keep going back to Congress for more money because the calamities are happening so fast, one right behind another, that the funds are being depleted. Well, who controls that? I don't make rain. I don't make snow. And white folk don't either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could arrest me, yeah. but why don't you arrest God for sending tornadoes and wind and storms and flood and hailstones? Why don't you arrest God for sending pestilence and soon famine will come? You will see. The Bible say you will look at your little fat babies with the thought in mind of eating your own children. These are the days coming in the next few years on your beloved America because God is angry with America and he's angry with you. Woe to the shepherds who feed themselves and not the flock. Should not the shepherd feed the flock? If a man is in sin, Ezekiel said, and you warn him not, he will surely die. But I will require his blood at your hands. But if he's in sin and you warn him, and he fails to change, then he will surely die, but you have saved your soul. I'm trying to save my soul. So I'm going to warn you, I don't care whether you like what I say or don't like what I say. If you afraid, then get up and go on home. But death will walk home with you. Death will come in your door with you. You won't escape the wrath of God for your foolishness. The wages of sin is death. Now let's see why God sent down his decree of death on America. And then I'm out of here. You can do with it what you want. But if you play games with religion, I'm telling you, your jig is up. If you play games and politics with the lives and well-being of the people, I'm telling you, your jig is up. Go ahead, minister, go ahead. And if you out here gang banging and killing your brother and sister, making mothers and grandmothers grieve as you send their grandchildren to their final resting place, I'm warning you, if you love blood that much, then God will give you a lot of your blood to drink like water and the bloodthirsty enemy that has killed us all the days of our life 
he's prepared to take you down in big numbers now. You can take it or leave it. I don't have no notes. I didn't come here with a prepared text. I came to stand up and see how God would use me in Selma, Alabama. And if I answer something going on in your heart and in your mind, don't give me no credit or no honor. All credit, all praise, all honor belongs to God. I'm just a servant that is here and soon will be gone. But the truth will set you free. Did you know that the wicked in the days of Noah Listen. had a very violent society? Listen. They were violent and they were wicked. And the Bible says every imagination of their hearts was continuously to do evil. So God sent Noah, told him, build an ark. People laughed, people mocked. He preached 150 years and that was too short. Because the people, see when they're playing and they're playing with God, they always want more time to continue in their foolishness. That's right. That's right. And one day when they weren't paying attention, God told them, get in the ark. Take your family and close the door. And everything in is locked in and everything out is locked out. And the people saw a cloud forming and they said, oh, it's just going to be another rainy day. Yeah. But they didn't know the cloud kept forming and kept forming. And the rain kept coming. And the Bible said they were partying. They were dancing. They were popping their face. They were getting all down. When the rains came, and the book said he killed them all, and it even repented him that he had made a man like that. And then he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Remember what I said on that wicked and adulterous generation, Jonah, huh? We'll, we'll get there in a second. In the book of Genesis, three men met with Abraham in the plains of Mamre. One of them was the Lord. And Abraham recognized him and said, Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, pass not away from me. Sarah, Sarah, fix him some food. He may be hungry. Sit down, Lord, and rest yourself. But the Lord came to take care of some business. And he said, Abraham... I'm sending these angels down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm going to kill everything but Lot and the members of his family. Abraham was hurt by the judgment of God. And he questioned God's judgment. And he said, well, would you destroy the righteous along with the wicked? God knew Abraham didn't understand. So he said, Abraham, if you can find 50. I will save the city but meanwhile angels go on down into Sodom and get ready to take care of business Abraham couldn't find 50 he couldn't find 40 he couldn't find 30 he couldn't find 20 meanwhile the angels were living in Lot's house but the men of Sodom were doing something that no man had ever done before then what was that Holy Quran says they were looking at men with lust in their heart as they should a female. Yeah. And that conduct was abominable in the sight of God. See, pastors, pastors, pastors. You cannot hide the standard of God under a bushel basket and preach for the sake of money and leave the standard of God alone. You have to bring the standard of God out from under the bushel basket and put it up high so that the people will see how far off they are. So that when God starts chastising them, they'll know exactly why they're being worked. The people of Lot came to Lot's house 
They knocked on the door. What you want? We want them fine looking men you got up in there. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's my two daughters. Look at them. They're, they're beautiful girls. Oh, we don't want your daughters. Uh, Mr. Levin, Mr. Levin, Mr. Levin. Levine, is that what it is? Levin or Levine. Usually it has an E on the end of it if it's Levine. But whatever it is, he know who I'm talking to. You call me homophobic he's anti-gay what would you say if Lot came back huh? Huh? what would you say if Abraham whom you claim to be your father if he came back what would you say would you call Abraham homophobic talk back to me Thank you, Thank you. Yes, sir. yes sir I love gay people I love every one of my brothers and sisters. I don't care what their circumstance of sin is because I got circumstance of sin and there ain't nobody in here holy. Where's the holy one? Stand up! Everybody better sit down. You ain't holy, brother. You better sit down. The Bible say all our righteousness is like filthy rags with God. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Ain't none of us that don't stand in need of God's mercy. None of us. So I'm not throwing off on those who have that particular problem. Because we all got a problem we got to deal with. I got to put it on you. And you know why I got to put it on you? Because I love you. I love you. And I want us to escape God's wrath. And there is a way out. And I'm going to tell you the way out so we can get out. Smitherman can get out too. You can get out. Clinton can get out. Everybody can get out. But you got a window of opportunity and it's closing. I'm almost there. Abraham couldn't find 30, couldn't find 20, couldn't find 10. God said, go back. See if you can find one. Abraham came back and said, I couldn't find one. Meanwhile, the angels told Lot, Take your family and get out and don't look back. That's right. And when Abraham was convinced that the judgment of God was true, the Bible said on that very day, fire and brimstone fell on Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says, as it was in the days of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Oh, beloved family, I've got just about a few more minutes. And I can't take too much more time. But beloved family, beloved family of Selma, I'm just filled. I'm full because of what I've experienced while being here, of the beauty of this people and the sadness of your condition and the hypocrisy of those in leadership who would dare tell you that things are better while they're manipulating every day to rob you of the power of your vote so that they could stay in power for life and still lead you and teach you and have control over you while they themselves have not repented of the evil of yesterday as well as the evil of today as it was in the days of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two more pictures I'm going to give you, and one, of course, is Pharaoh. And that's very close to our hearts. 
because I don't ever hear white folks saying, go down Moses, way down in Egypt land, tell fell. Why don't you let my people go? Look here. That's your song. White folk don't sing that. They know they ain't in no Egypt land. But you in a modern Egypt. Under a modern Pharaoh. That's had us in bondage over 400 years. And they have a conspiracy. Like the old Pharaoh, kill all the male children and spare the female. They don't want you connecting to Africa. They don't want you connecting with no power but them. And they want to determine who your friends are going to be. So every black man that you've had that went outside of America to find a friend over there, they were maligned by the press and called sellouts of black people. You know I'm right. They did that to W.E.B. Du Bois. They did that to Marcus Garvey. They did it to Malcolm. And when Martin, may God rest his great soul, when Martin saw that the war on poverty by Mr. Johnson would never be successful because of the prosecution of a war in Vietnam when he spoke against that war. That's right. They called him meddling. Yes, sir. And the government sent down a decree of death yes, sir. on our listen, brother. Listen, listen. That's the story there, baby. Right now. Right to this day. This modern pharaoh <laughs> He has found new ways to kill us I'm not a dreamer I, I didn't lay down and dream that there's a conspiracy Here's a man that's Jewish Tell me I'm crazy Because I think of conspiracy theories You can't be Jewish and not understand conspiracy? <laughs> you can't be Jewish and not understand conspiracy? You can't be Jewish and not understand conspiracy. Pharaoh had a conspiracy against the children of Israel. Who was that man, Haman, and the king, Ahasuerus, and Mordecai? And who was that brilliant woman of the Bible? Oh, what was her name? Esther. Queen Esther. They had a conspiracy to kill all the Jews. Not some of them, all of them. And were it not for Queen Esther and Mordecai prevailing on the king Ahasuerus, every Jew in that area would have been killed. That's not in the Bible as a joke. You that grew up in Selma, the older ones that sit in front of me, you know there was a time when you didn't have to lock your doors. You know there was a time in Alabama, even under the heat of white oppression, that we never did to each other what we're doing to each other today. Pharaoh has decided to let you go and then he's decided to kill you just like he did the children of Israel I got to tell you because you dying right in front of me as I'm looking at you you're in the valley of the shadow of death 
You talk about the shadow of hate, Mr. Levin. We live under the valley of the shadow death. of death. Teach me. Teach me. Every day. Every day. Look at it, brothers and sisters. No more welfare, welfare reform. They let you go. Affirmative action, gone. They let you go. Entitlement programs, gone. We let you go. Oh, yeah. Medicaid, Medicare. Go in, they let you go. You crying. Look, why are you doing this to us, Pharaoh? You sound just like them stupid children of Israel. Yeah. Out in the wilderness, they would rather be back on the Pharaoh than be free. Here's Miss Rose Sanders fighting for you. She ain't getting nothing from it. She's not getting rich from her struggle. She's fighting for you. What are you waiting on? You waiting for death to come to a door so you can have a big funeral and talk about how strong she was? What the hell is wrong with you? There ain't no sideline in this struggle. You stood on the sideline when King marched on that bridge, but these few sisters. You got the right crowd. Talk, Minister, talk. Now you all can claim how proud you are. But you wasn't there. Stop. Stop. Sitting around in church Stop. talking about, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Negroes like you are always there. You're always there when your leaders go down, standing on the sidelines, biting your nails. Ain't no sideline for you today. You're either going to get involved or you won't be worth nothing. Cowardly mothers protecting your sons and your daughters get up, grow up strong. Your sons grow up weak. 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 All these girls in here strong. Weak. Independent. That's right, my master. Courageous. If Mother Cooper didn't knock the man down, we wouldn't even have known he could have fell. A sister had to show us he could go down. I love you, Mother Cooper, and I'm honored to be in your company. Hey, hey. And everybody in this room, go ahead. whenever they see Mother Cooper, they ought to flip their hats. Go ahead. Because she knocked the sheriff down that had been knocking us down. And we trembling with fear, but a woman with strength rose up and hit him with the power of God. I know Mother Cooper surprised herself. But Mother Cooper, see, it wasn't you. It wasn't you, Mama. See, Mama, the Bible, the Holy Quran said, I will slay them at your hand. See, when you become an instrument of God, he used you as a battle axe. He used the jawbone of an ass in Samson's hand. <laughs> This is an ass, That's but he's it. got a jawbone. And God got me in his hand. 
And all I got to do is move my jaw and speak the truth. And the Philistines' heads get crushed. See them, they can't take it. They run out. Well, it's getting hot. Them Negroes might attack me. Ain't nobody going to attack you. It's just your own fear. Out of your own evil, wicked hearts. That make you think somebody going to attack you. No, we can't do the job, but God is able. Now I'm just about finished. Let me wind this up. Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar had the Hebrew boys <laughs> took the gold and silver vessels and poured wine and strong drink in them. Changed their names, changed their tongues. Change the meat that they ate. Yeah. Yeah. Azariah, Hananiah, Zephaniah, yeah. Mishael, changed their name to Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. I mean, a bad Negro. A bad Negro. A bad Look at you, look at you. Where's your name? We call your name today. You stand up, but that ain't your name. That's your slave master's name. Johnson, Jones, Smith, O'Reilly, Jackson, White, Brown, Green, Blue. Tom, Tom. And you get a name like that. Same way they branded their horses, their dogs, and their pigs, they named black folk. And you ain't got sense enough now to recognize that that's somebody else's name that you're giving honor to. Give honor to God. You are God's people. Why not wear God's name? A man saw a finger writing in blood on the wall. Belshazzar couldn't read the handwriting. Say, Mene, Mene, Tekel Ufasin. Say, your kingdom has been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Oh, America, oh, America. Your kingdom has been weighed in the balance and it has been found wanting. And now death has come inside America. God has set Russia down. There is no superpower on the earth to trouble you. You at the pinnacle of success and power and influence. Top minister. And while you are at the top in your belly is the people of God all the way in the bottomless pit. The so God said, you are mine. I raised you up that I might make my holy name known through you. And when God broke Pharaoh down, all the rest of the nations had to bow down. Come on, and when God raised the children of Israel up, God, through the children of Israel, they knew that God had to be with them. Otherwise, they couldn't have come up. Well, here's the answer. The Son of Man is coming. He'll be in the heart of the earth three days in three nights. Go look at a map. Go ahead, look at it. Go look at a world map and you'll see North America, South America in the center of that map like the heart is near the center of your chest. The heart of the earth is North America. Go read the 24th chapter of Matthew. Yeah, read it. As lightning shining from the east even unto the west. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For he... <laughs> it said, wheresoever the eagles are gathered together, there will the carcass be. Well, the symbol of America is an eagle. And inside America is the remains of a once mighty and great people of God. But you are like dry bones now in the valley. Every bone disconnected from the other. 
That's why my sister said this has to be a unity, yeah. a unity rally so we can rally around the children to save the children. But you can't unite because the word hasn't come to you. But when the word came, the bones started rattling in the valley. It said, but the bones didn't stand up. There was no spirit in them. But God said to the son of man, there was another son of man coming up among the bones. <laughs> and the son of man went back to the Lord and said, I prophesied unto the bones. They've stirred, but they won't stand up. He said, prophesy unto the winds. And let the winds blow on these slain of God. And they'll stand up. See the wind of welfare reform. The wind of the killing of affirmative action. The wind of the cutting back of entitlements and Medicare and Medicaid blowing over the bones, huh? A white male backlash. Give me that paper, son. I read something in today's paper. The Sunday Montgomery Advertiser. I think it's your paper. It says state boards commissions mostly white male. All white male membership. Now this is bigotry, baby. This is racism, honey. You got a heck of a nerve talking about me. Yes. Let's read it. <laughs> All what? Board of Agriculture and Industry. Right. Alcoholic Beverage Control Board. You should be the boss of that as much liquor as you can. Electrical Contractors Board, Foreign Trade Relations Board, Forestry Commission, Industrial Relations Board of Appeal, Judicial Compensation Commission, white folk, Manufactured Housing Commission, white folks, Board of Medical Scholarship Awards, white folk, Oil and Gas Board, white folks, Peace officers, annuity and benefit fund, white folks. Peace officers, standards and training commission, white folks. Board of pharmacy, white folks. Pilotage commission, workman's compensation, medical services board, white folks. Oh, hey, 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 come on, write this down. the school board but look at the condition of the school but they might as well have all white school board then if you're not fighting for quality education you should sit down or rather we should sit you down on the on the county board you the majority but they can always get one of you to sell out. Or two of you. How could this be? If people died on the bridge and you got a white police chief still? And you the majority in, this, in the county? in the city if majority rule then why don't you as a majority turn this thing around I know I know I know you're afraid 
know, I know. No, 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 no. I know, I know. That's revolutionary. But look, don't you think that if you're given a chance with the proper mindset, you could do a good job? Not only for your people, but for them as well? You just need a chance. Give yourself a chance. In my conclusion, the Bible says that he will come out of the east. He's a son of man. That means he's not a spook. He's the son of a man. John said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelled among men. But check out this part, and the light shined in the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. And he came unto his own, but his own received him not. Why didn't his own receive him? Because they were looking for somebody else. He didn't look like the description. You know, the FBI got most wanted, you know what I mean? And they give you a description of the person that's wanted. So you won't make a mistake. You are looking for Jesus, aren't you? What he look like? See? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. He could come tomorrow and knock on your door. You might call 911. Say there's a nigga at the door. He come to rob us. But the Bible said he had hair like lamb's wood. He had feet like burnished brass. He's a black man, brothers and sisters. See, now, I wish white folk wouldn't leave right now. Because you're going to be in a terrible fix when this black Christ come in power with a sword in his hand dripping with blood. And you've been killing his people? I know you don't want to see Jesus. Not with as much hell as you've been raising. Well, family, let's get the solution. We are all in trouble. God is lashing America, and the lashing is going to get heavier and heavier. Mark my words. God is angry, and the loss is going to come inside our own communities because you have become your own worst enemy. But how? How can we get out of this? Our sins, our sins are terrible. How can we get out of this? Hey, wait a minute. Now there's hope. There's hope. I ain't going to leave you like this. I'm going to leave you with a smile on your face. I'm not going to leave you like this. You know we've been bad. But so were the children of Israel. Yet God chose them. How you know they couldn't have been too good if he sent down a law saying thou shalt not steal. <laughs> thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. So you don't have to tell righteous people that. They already know that. So the children of Israel, Pharaoh had messed them up. And the Pharaoh of this world had messed us up. We're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But 
you the people of God. He said, I'm going to choose a foolish people. I know you don't want to be foolish, but I will be foolish to be God's choice. See, I'm going to choose me a foolish people, and I'm going to vex you with a foolish people. He said, I'm going to choose the things that are not to bring to naught the things which are. I'm going to take the bottom rail and I'm going to bring it to the top. I'm going to take the last and I'm going to make it first because I am Omega and I am Alpha. And thou shalt no more be the tail, thou shalt be the head. And one writer said, oh, this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. Don't you know if God raised us up, it got to be his doing? If we become the head from being the tail or the top from being the bottom, God would have to do it. God love you, brother and sister. Your suffering was undeserved. You didn't do nothing to deserve this 400 years. You find the answer throughout scripture, but one of the favorite passages of mine is John. The ninth chapter. And a man was walking with Jesus, the disciples, and they saw a man born blind, and they said, Master, who did sin? That this man is born blind. Did his mother sin? Did his father sin? Did he sin? Jesus said, no, neither his mother nor his father, nor did he sin. He's born blind that the works of God might be made manifest in him. See, Jonah? You know how white folks sometimes call you Jonah, you know? Because they know your history better than you. They know what is expected of you better than you. You God's people, but you frolicking. You partying, you know how you do. You dancing. You drinking. You having a good time, ain't you? But every time you go down into the depth of your madness, something touches you. My God, he calls me. He calls me by the thunder. I hear him call within my soul. I ain't got long to stay here. This is you. In the dope den, ain't got long. In the crack house, ain't got long. In the crap game, ain't got long. Playing Uncle Tom, ain't got long. God is after his people. Look here. You are the answer. Every one of you have said this. Lord, Lord. If you just get me out of this just one time, one more time, one more time. I'll serve you for the rest of my day. You've been knowing that you're supposed to serve him, but he's calling all your cards in. You ready? Here's the solution. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive your sins, and I will heal your land. God has already given you the land. It's yours. And he'll heal it if you come first. Oh, uh, white folk, don't get angry. No, don't get angry. You sing it. This land is your land. This land is my land. Are we taking you up on it? This land is our land. We paid a price. For this territory, we died here, we bled here, we fought here, we suffered here. 
Why shouldn't we be blessed here? But guess what? Your blessing is on us now. If my people possessive tents who are called by my name it's really talking to you they can become his people if they follow you in repentance see Jonah you got to take off your garment put on your sackcloth and your ashes because you've been running from your responsibility Jonah in the belly of the whale, you in the belly of the beast, pray! And he spit you up on dry land. Get in your sackcloth and your ashes and beg his pardon for playing the fool so long. But God, if you let me go, I'll go to the people of Nineveh and preach. And Nineveh was the only city in the Bible that escaped God's wrath. If my people Mm, 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 mm. So that's why I'm in Selma. I'm here to ask you on the second anniversary of the Million Man March where righteous spiritual men called a holy day. You don't have one holy day. Not you, Christians. I'm sorry, you just don't have one. Go ahead, Minister. Go ahead. Go ahead, Minister. I know Christmas should be. But more alcohol is bought, sold, and consumed on Christmas than any other day of the year. And you let the big fat fella from the North Pole move Jesus out on his own day children not thinking about the Christ child they want to know did the big fat Caucasian fella leave something under my tree you party on Christmas you kiss under the mistletoe and have sex under the tree You have profaned every day that God would have you made holy. You older folk in here, 40 years ago, there was nothing bad that we could do on the Sabbath. On Sunday, it was God's day. Everybody. Business closed. No partying, no dancing, no nothing. Everything go today on Sunday. You don't have one holy day. Christmas gone, New Year come, you're drunk again. February come, oh, President's Day, you're drunk again. Valentine's Day, you got some stupid little something with a arrow shooting arrows in people's hearts talking about I'm in love you should shut up you ain't in love you in lust you don't know what real love is March April sometime April sometime March Easter come now you say Jesus rose. Well, what that got to do with you going downtown, spending up all your money, buying an Easter bundle? You say, well, Christmas time, I'm following the wise men. Well, the wise men were really wise. They brought some gold, not all. Some frankincense, some myrrh. You broke right now from what you spent Christmas and the boys in Selma, the white merchants are saying, Merry Christmas, <laughs> Merry Christmas. They in the black for the whole year because of your foolishness. Now the Easter parade has come to church. Sunday, Easter Sunday, here they come. May, 
Mother's Day. Every day is Mama's Day. And they get your money some more. Mother's Day. Then Memorial Day. Then July 4th, we drunk again. Drunk again. <laughs> Labor Day, well, we celebrating, we ain't got no job. <laughs> we, well, we drunk again. Here come November, I miss this day. Now you back to, oh no, Thanksgiving. Oh, here's how they gave thanks. The poor native people showed how to plant corn and the native people became the turkey. I think it's, before y'all run me out of here, my dear family, on that day, I would like us to observe a holy day on October 16th because the miracle of the Million Man March was the fulfillment of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. And they stood up an exceedingly great army. And we stood up on that mall for 14 hours. And white folk looked and saw peace and love and brotherhood that they had never seen among us and they knew that we had awakened and they became frightened because Farrakhan had made the call and God touched your hearts and made you come and when you stood there it was just like Jesus standing on the Mount of Transfiguration with Elijah and Moses to one side and, and the dove came down saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. What we did, God was pleased with. And we want to keep God pleased so he can keep on empowering us. Now look at this. If on October 16th, the night before the 15th, you eat, after you eat your supper, you fast till the next sundown. All the older ones of us, you got to practice fasting anyway. Those of who are 11 and younger, you don't have to fast. But if you're 12 and up, you should learn to go without for one day for God's glory. Listen to this, sunrise, just before sunrise, mother, if it's a single family home, or mom and dad, you get up and get your children up and make them wash up and make sure the room that you're gonna pray in is clean. Because you can't invite God into an unclean place. And then you, with your children, bow down. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Didn't say what manner to pray in. It just said pray because prayer is common in every religion. Just the form of it may be different. Okay? Bow down. Pray. After you pray, then mama, daddy, if you're Christian, open the gospel open the scriptures if you're Jewish open the Torah if you're a Muslim open the Quran if you're in African centered pan-Africanist tradition you know the great wisdom of our ancestors bring that into the home and you sit in a circle and you read from the scriptures on forgiveness and the power of letting go of the things that make you dislike one another. Yes. Look at it now. Yes. And you start with your children. So I notice you fighting with your sister or fighting with your brother. What was that about? And let them talk. And then ask each other for forgiveness. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those 
who trespass against us. In that forgiveness is a bond being created. That's right. Right. Then as parents, see we make mistakes too. That's right. With our children, we don't mean harm, but we do make mistakes. What parent would be strong enough to say to their son and their daughter, sweetheart, is there something that I may have done or said that upset you that you would like to talk to me about? Go ahead, minister, go ahead. And when the, and the child says this to the parent, you don't try to defend yourself. Just stop and listen, listen to them. Because sometimes we get, well, you know, I'm, I'm your mother. Blah, 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 blah. She know you're the mother. Take it in, take it in. But just be quiet and listen to your children. And if they say something, hear them and then ask. Oh, son, I didn't mean it like that. I know you was out late, but I told you, be in at 10. And I wore you out. <laughs> but, Daddy, I, I, I know what you told me, and I was thinking about it, but I just got caught up in the basketball game, and I forgot. I said, well, anybody can forget. Well, son, I, I want you to know that what God has asked us to do, we have to obey. And what I've asked you to do, it pleases me that you would try to obey. And if I beat you as I did beat you, <laughs> I'm asking you if you would forgive me, but next time, come in on time. <laughs> but at least if you ask your child to forgive you, the child not going to say, no, I'm not. The child gonna say, oh, mommy, of course I forgive you. And then you hug her. Talk, Talk. And you kiss her. Talk, Maybe tears yeah. will come down your cheeks. Go ahead, and the family will be strengthened oh, by the act of forgiveness. Yeah. See? No. Don't stop there now. Let all the churches in Selma be open. Listen, listen. And then after you've made peace at home, you know there are people in the church that you ain't talking to. Uh, don't, don't wait till they die now. And then come with all them crocodile tears and then spend all your money, put it in the grave. I'm sending them away right. Why didn't you just treat them right? I know, I know it's time, it's time, but look, if you did that, go to church and seek out the brother or sister that you've had a problem with and sit together in peace and talk to each other and ask and receive each other's forgiveness and embrace each other. Then the church family is stronger, the house family is stronger. This pastor. Pastor Aaron Dopines is a good man. And because of his strength, he is able to call the gang leaders. And we gotta call our young people that are killing each other and reconcile their differences until you make them commit to peace. And then in the early afternoon, why don't you have a rally in the city? Yeah. Everybody come out. Yeah, everybody. 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 Then let a black boy and girl speak. Hispanic boy and girl speak. Arab, Asian, and white boy and girl speak. And we be quiet and listen to our young people. And then after our young people speak, then we speak. Don't, don't, don't speak long like Brother Farrakhan tonight. I mean... I couldn't cheat you, Selma. I know I got another appointment. I got 350 miles that I got to go. But you know, this is so historic. And I'm hurting for you. I'm hurting for you. And I could not leave you without giving you something good to go home with. And so my family, look, 
If you did that, if you didn't go to work that day, no school, no work, no play, no drinking, no alcohol, smoking, no weed, not to think of crack, no illicit sex, no wrongdoing of any kind. See? If you the basketball player for your school, say it's a holy day, I ain't playing today. If you the football star, hey, it's a holy day. They say, well, if you don't play today, you ain't playing no more. It's saying, well, you got it. That's right. That's now, right. you telling me, you threatening me when I want to observe God? Say, you wouldn't do that to the Jewish person who's observing Yom Kippur. This is our day of atonement. And I'm going to God. Take your scholarship then. See, you got to be strong enough to walk away from what you love so that God will give you double. He tries you by what you love. Don't worry about people threatening you. They can't run Selma without you. They can't do nothing in Selma without you. And if you didn't show up one day, they would see how important your presence is, then maybe the next day they'll act by you a little better. And then if we register everybody to vote in the black community, in the Hispanic community, in the Arab and Asian community, hey, the next day the mayor will act different. Everybody else will act. The city council won't. See that resolution that they gave? Negative against me? See, that's a noose. Not around my neck, but around theirs. You know why they gave me that resolution? They don't understand. And they're manipulated by those who do. So that's not your councilman. Get rid of them. See, I'm a litmus test. That's a tongue. What do you know about me that you could condemn me before I even come in the city? That's very bad, Councilman. Well, maybe you need to repent and atone. And maybe if you repent and atone, we'll let you go back. But if there's no repentance in you, we need to get rid of you and put somebody in your place that will be better than you. Why are you not clapping on that? Why, you, you like them, huh? You listen to me for an hour and a half. No, 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 you listen to me. I spoke from my heart. I had no prepared text. My heart to your heart. Do I sound like a bigot? A hater? An anti-Semite? Then why would they condemn me before I even came in the city? Levin is afraid. He's afraid that truth will wake you up. And those that seek to control you will lose control over you. That's why he would send a hate kit on the shadow of hate to all the black schools, but send nothing to the white schools. He's afraid of my growing influence. They can't stop this. This is from God. So now, we'll give the brothers and sisters a chance to repent. 
give them the tape of what I said tonight. And if they still want to keep their opinion of me, okay. Well, I care that they are in office. Because if I'm fighting for you, and they hate me for fighting for you, they cannot be your friends. Time out for people smiling in your face. And cutting deals behind the door that lock you out of what you voted them in for. So look, on this Day of Atonement, if you figure one day you don't do this and observe God, number one, every black leader will gain more empowerment. All the local leaders that are in here tonight, if you agree that we should take one day and just give it to God, every one of you will be empowered as a result of that because they will know that there's a movement growing. And right from the atonement, the very thing that Sister Rose has been fighting for, putting a circle of unity around our children, the fact that they didn't see you for one day means that we could do it for two. That we could do it for three. And we could crush any business in this area that won't give us justice. You've got power. You're not powerless. And those that were beaten on that bridge deserve more than what we are given. And you must not let them lull you to sleep with promises. And at night, if you could host a rally somewhere, sell tickets. Five dollars. I ain't got no money. Oh, hush. You're spending a lot. Five dollars or ten dollars. And we pool that money at the end of that night and open up a community owned, operated business in the city of Selma. And then we as pastors, if it's a supermarket, that if we got 50,000, you could leverage 50,000 to $500,000. You can open up a supermarket, make it the most beautiful supermarket in Selma. Some white folk will try to bomb it. Because somebody going to lose some food money. We can do it. But if we, if we decide that we're going to spend our money in our own establishment, which we the community own now, hire these young people as clerks and cashiers and those of you that got business administration Go manage it Go ahead. Go ahead. and if all of us spend our money there in one year yes. you got a profit <laughs> then you tie your supermarket to the black farmer because right. if we do it in 400 cities <laughs> in one year we could have the largest one of the largest chains of supermarkets in the country and suppose next year on the atonement we do it again then leverage fifty thousand and get another business see you could own a radio station radio free selma in montgomery you could own your own newspaper plant oh yeah or we could pool money with the brothers and sisters in Montgomery and in Birmingham who may do the same thing that you do in Selma and then we buy a food processing plant. Get the food from the farm, can it, freeze it, then put the can on your shelf with your name on it. Selma peas. <laughs> 
Selma Carrots. Montgomery. Asparagus. Hey, before you know it, you find yourself dotting the landscape with businesses that are owned by you. And then you go to the bank. You know, the bank don't treat you right, you know that. But you can tell them now. And look here, Mr. Bank. Let me see your properties that you foreclosed on. See, don't think they're not going to bend. They'll threaten you at first. They'll try to bomb your supermarket. But they, hey, hey, hey. Organize. Put your men around. Watch your supermarket. Watch it. Shoot whoever come to mess it up. Hey, hey. And after a while, when they see that buckshot in their backside, you got a right to protect what you own. Everybody down here have something to protect their shops. This is yours. You know they're not going to protect it for you. See, and after a while, they'll, be, they'll really start respecting you. And then, if you got everybody voting, when is the next mayoral election? 2000. We gotta go to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother, you wanna be mayor? Yeah. You yeah. do? Yes, sir. If you be a good mayor, and I know you will, yes, we'll but you don't in. send him we'll and in. turn your back on him. <laughs> send him and then become so powerful that you watch the forces yes. that will come to him when you're not watching. Listen, family, we can make this man mayor. Yes, we can. I saw a brother policeman over there on the wall. He looked pretty happy, contented. He didn't look like a Tom. <laughs> you got anybody you want to be police chief? Have you seen somebody that you could make a police chief? Yes. What about fire marshal? And... Yes, See, you, 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 can, you can take government. Take it, take it. It's not a crime to take over government. What is a crime if you take it over and don't run it right? So family, I thank you. Sister Rose, may God bless you, strengthen you, preserve you, protect you make you whole because we need you a long long time may god bless your husband senator sanders hold it hold it hold it please let's i know you're tired you've been here a long time but let's not break up now i'm 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 giving blessings be sure to get yours and I thank uh, sister for the invitation. Do you know how much money we raised? Yes, I want to tell you. Um. I can't see. We raised twenty-one hundred forty-nine dollars and forty cents. <laughs> and every penny of it will stay right here, working for Selma and the programs that Rose Sanders and SCLC have for the people of Selma. I thank you for the love you've shown me, for your kindness, and with your permission, would you permit me to please excuse myself so I can Get rolling. Mama has something that she wants to present. I present to you. It's best, like my best, and you see, I mean, all the yes. best I have now. Hold on, brothers and sisters. Please, everybody, just a few more minutes. You've been very patient, especially our brothers and sisters outdoors. I'd like to read a few of these words, because it was so, I had, just it was so much in the paper. 
about you. Just the fuel just and the flame. Yes. Just the flame. There was so much in you about the flame you that you was fused and and all about the setting yourself back and still improved it. And you were starting this out of the right of your words, yeah. And I was saying, I say I believe this is his division. I don't want to set the world on fire. Just want to feel a flame of love and feel this flame to burn forever as a symbol of God's love. I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want atonement, reparation, and reconciliation. God was man through Christ and to help rid the world of some of its vice, unbelievable crimes, killing, guns, gangs, and drugs. Most of the crimes are committed by you. I won't read the rest because <laughs> your time is limited. But mother, I want to say to our mother, our mother. That's right. Who is a mother of struggle. See, I want mother, like myself, when we pass from this world, to pass with a smile because we see our young people in a safe condition and a better position. Mama worked hard all her life for this. And you young people that are here must carry on the struggle. And Selma, you can lead all of Alabama to a better way of life. Why don't you take the challenge, Selma? May God bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. But it's not enough for y'all just to hear this message. We're looking for volunteers to help do the Day of Atonement here in Selma. And those of you who are willing to work on the, on the, um, what the minister laid forth, we, I know it's late, but we need you to stay in the church. If you don't want to work on that, if you will turn your, um, where are those little papers? There's some volunteer sheets. Everyone has one. We want everybody to join an organization of your choice. NAACP, SCLC, the Dallas Hub. Uh